quarterfinal round action coming up tonight at 6.30. Hope you'll be with us here on the IHSA Television Network. What makes you? Jones. And at center for West Pike, a 6'6 senior, number 53, Marty Hall. At one guard for U High, a 6 foot sophomore, number 11, Jeremy Stanton. And at guard for West Pike, a 5'10 senior, number 11, Keith Hall. And at the other guard for U High, a 5'9 sophomore, 33, Jonah Batumzi. And at the other guard for the Cardinals, of 5'11 senior, number 41, Kirk Mosley. And introducing the head coaches, first for U High in his sixth season is Cal Hubbard. And for Russ Pike in his sixth season is Steve Joslin. And your officials for this first semi-final game are Gene Morgan first and Rick Rocky of Smokiesburg. You're looking there at the back of Steve Joslin of the Cardinals of West Pike as they get some final instructions here from their head coach in advance of this semi-final round ball game. There are our starting lineups, and you know all about Hall, but uh, Mosley, Billings, and Heath Hall with a lot of assists in yesterday's games. Uhi with a very balanced attack. When well, they start three sophomores in their starting lineup, and you look at Uhi, the both ball clubs are very balanced and get a lot of scoring from a lot of different positions in the team comparison from field goals, West Pike to the edge, three-point field goals, West Pike, free throws, That's even rebounding in size. I think that's West Pike. And quickness, I give the nod to you. Our team comparison is brought to you by American Eagle and American Airlines Cargo. When you need your package delivered today, not tomorrow. Well, today is the final day of the Class A basketball season. Four teams left. Here are two of them as they battle it out in the first semifinal game, and the first possession belongs to the Cardinals. Mosley, number 41, operating at the top. This is Peter Craig, and Uhai in that zone got a hand on that pass. Uhai opens up in their 1-2-2 uh, two, two zone defense. They play a lot of 1-2-2 one, two, two ball press, full court, and then they drop back into a 1-2-2 two, two zone. And it's D.J. Hubbard that time who denies the pass to Marty Hall. That zone should slow the tempo of this game, Greg, and that's exactly what the team in the green wants. Well, when you look at West Pike, they're a ball club that they want to play up tempo. They average 87 per ball game, and Uhai at 61 points per ball game. And Uhai has given up only 46 and has given up no more than 64 points all season. And that to a double-A school as the shot by Hall is good, and they've given up two here in Champaign in the first 30 seconds. Oh, he's such a good post-up player, but he also can go out and float on the outside. He's got a nice touch for a big man and good ball movement, I thought, that time by West Pike on the offensive end. Jeremy Stanton, the sophomore point guard at the top. Here's Nathan Hubbard, their top scorer, who was held at nine yesterday, but has two already in this game. Keith Hall in the corner. He can shoot the three. And the ball knocked away by Kevin Jones. And the Tumsey trips and loses the ball. Hey, Craig got through a squeeze there. Peter Craig with the fancy dribble. Again, a tip pass, but it does come to West Pike. Yeah, very aggressive and very active out of that zone defense, but they must protect inside where Marty Hull is. And Mosley for three gives West Pike a three-point lead. You got to guard the three because Mosley now in the year with 94 threes. He is quite accurate from three-point territory, 42%. That's outstanding. The Tumsey spins away. This is D.J. Hubbard to Kevin Jones, and the sophomore misses from the baseline. Nice rebound that time by Billings on you know, the defensive boards. This is Billings, and he'll be short with that one. They have been tipped. Let's see. One official looking at the other. No, it was not tipped. They call it an air ball. The Pioneers, as we said, have had a lot of success here in the 90s, and uh, they're hoping to get to a championship game again here as they did in 1992. 
They lost, by the way, that year to Findlay, and ironically, another little tiny school. In fact, only three schools in Class A basketball Elite Eight history have been smaller than the Cardinals, and one of those was Findlay, which won the championship against U High in 92, three years ago. Tumsey with the pass to the baseline. This is Nathan Hubbard. He's off the mark, but Kevin Jones scoops up, and Marty Hall has the rebound. Jones got a good look on that on that uh, possession for you. I just couldn't finish the play, Dick, but he's done a good job working on the offensive glass. Mosley a bomb, and that was in there, but popped out. Kevin Jones keeps it alive, and the Pioneers have it. Down 5-2 to two here. Nathan Hubbard on that baseline, and that'll be a block against Peter Craig. West Pike. Excuse me, I think I said fourth smallest, third smallest school to reach the Class A semifinals. And uh, boy, what a three-year period they've had, Greg. 83 and four. Nathan Hubbard out to Jonah Batumsey. 5-2 our score here in the early going. West Pike has the lead. We're just about three minutes into the game. You know, West Pike gets it done on the defensive end, too. They're a very talented basketball team. They're really known for their offense, but defensively, they're very, very solid also, Dick. As the three by Stanton is good, and that ties the score. A lot of times, people will assume, because the team scores a lot of points, that it doesn't play defense. As the shot here is put up, and not good, but it was a foul, and will put Heath Hall at the free throw line. You assume that because sometimes those teams give up a lot of points, but it's not points allowed that measure defense as much as field goal percentage allowed, Greg. A uh, good quick look right here. Ball back the other way, and West Pike so explosive offensively. Really like to push the basketball up the floor. The shot didn't go, and Hall was fouled on the play, and Hall has been great line. Dick, you're exactly right to continue your thought there. West Pike, a ball club that averages 87, but they only give up 55 points per ball game. So their average margin is better than 32 points per ball game for victories. And the tremendous margin of victory. Obviously, they've not played as tough a schedule as some of the other teams who are here in Champaign, but they play defense. And they shoot it well, 51% from the outside, 71% from the line. So they're just an all-around good, very balanced basketball team. Paul gets one of two from the line there, and that puts West Pike back on top by one point as we have our first timeout call. 6-5, West Pike in the early going. One of your network sponsors is Country Companies. I lent my car to my brother, and he demolished it. Two years old, didn't have a scratch. Honey, about a month before my agent had recommended this extra keeper coverage, $21 more a year, I remember thinking, well, I probably don't need it, but if you think so, it turns out they gave me a brand new car. This year's model. Country companies. It's nice to know when it matters most. The country is behind you. Guess it's just a matter of trust. Extreme mountain biking, 45 miles an hour. Did it. 65 miles an hour. Done it. Blindfolded. <laughs> Been there. Then a 4,000 foot vertical drop. Tried that. All while slamming a dew. <laughs> Nothing's more intense than slamming mountain dew. Oh yeah, no shoot. Hmm? Just kidding. <laughs> Decent. Guys in the stripes for this one are Gene Morgan and Rick Rungi, and they're thrilled to be working at semi final game here in Champaign as we watch Derek Mosley hit a three again. Yeah, Kirk Mosley there, good ball movement there. Mosley just spotted up for the three, and he's a great shooter from a long range, and he knocked down the long bomb and on the year for Mosley now. 94 threes on the year, and they like to shoot it from three-point range. They shoot him at a 38% clip as a ball club, so they, they live by the three. Kirk Mosley, his school's all-time three-point leader, he broke his brother Darren's record as the ball is out of bounds from behind here, and the Pioneers down one. We'll put it in play. And there's Steve Joslin, the sixth-year head coach at uh, West Pike. Each of these coaches has been at his present school for six seasons, and they have very similar records. Stanton to Batumzi. D.J. Hubbard fires, and that's in and out, but Stanton with the offensive rebound. And Uhai will set up again here, trying to regain the lead. This is Batumzi, and he can't get the roll. A couple of hard luck shots for Uhai, and Hall has the rebound. 
Keith Hall, Hall, H-A-L-L, -L, Marty Hall, H-U-L-L, -L, as Craig fires and misses from long range. And the ball tipped out, and this is Mosley to Billings, who ran over D.J. Hubbard. Billings dragged with the foul, his first team second. Billings, it looked like, or it appeared that he was able to slip through two defenders. The call was made uh, by the official Morgan right there, and the, there's a nice nifty pass there. It looked like Billingsley slipped in between the defenders right there, but they got him on the charge. And Uhai has the basketball against full court pressure. West Pike trying to speed up the pace of the game by using a little full court defense. Still 6-5, Cardinals lead. Move and pick right there. And so Uhai gives it up as Jonah Bacunzi is called for his second foul. Uhai foul 33, Jonah Bacunzi is second. Team foul two. Pioneers are pretty deep and they're going to get somebody off the bench to protect Bacunzi. First we see a new cardinal coming into the game. That's Jason Stotts, 6'4", 210 pound senior. He's a good inside player as he replaces Heath Hall. He replaces Heath Hall. And into the game for the Pioneers is Jason Graff. But Tumsey goes to the bench with his two fouls. We're halfway through the first period, and West Pike has the one-point lead. And a good look at the ball press of Uhai looking to trap out of it. Billings gets out of a trap. He was stocked in the ball game. They can bring Hull out on the floor a little bit. And Hull can do some things out away from the basket. He doesn't shoot a lot of threes, but he has a pretty good touch from right there. Although he missed that time from 15 feet away, and the ball out of bounds off of the Pioneers still belongs to the Cardinals. I'm bringing Hull out on the floor, Dick. The other thing he can do with his size, he can just skip it and pass right over the top of that zone. Mosley up top. Yeah, there's what he does as Hull gets it inside, but the shot is missed by Stotts, and another offensive rebound for the Cardinals. Oh, Hall is a good passer, and we saw it there, Greg. Well, he's an outstanding player. He's not only a good scorer, but uh, you know, a player that averages right at 27 per ball game. You think he's very selfish. He's not very unselfish. Right there, a good battle on the inside, and uh, really good board work that time by Peter Craig. Kevin Jones called for the foul, and the free throw good for Peter Craig as he builds the West Pike lead to two. Had 13 points yesterday in their win. Another one is through there for Peter Craig. The junior, two juniors in the West Pike starting lineup. The other three are seniors. We mentioned Uhai with three sophomores and a couple of seniors. Nathan Hubbard trying to work that baseline, but Mosley has cut him off pretty well. DJ from long range, that's a three. DJ Hubbard, the nephew of Nathan Hubbard. Good ball movement, a nice, uh, nice shot by uh, DJ Hubbard from three-point range. And we're tied at eight. There's that, that pass by Hull. He just skips it right over the top of that defense. And now Mosley for a three. He has two of them, and the lead is three for West Pike. And the pass to Jones, who had a step on the defense a little bit behind, and that allowed Brock Billings to slap it away for Steve Joslin's team. West Pike won to play an up-tempo ball game, but I really feel like that right now the tempo is in the favor of you high, don't you, Dick? Kind I do. Slow pace. That's the, and, and usually it is easier, Greg, for the team that wants the slow pace to force that. As another substitution for the Pioneers here, Eric Schliff, a 5'9 junior, replacing Jeremy Stanton. DJ Hubbard gets it to Nathan. Here's Flip. He decided against the 12 foot shot. Now it's DJ Hubbard from 13. And that's off the mark, and West Pike has the rebound. Three point lead in the ball for the Cardinals. They're just skipping over the top of that defense, and then they're letting the hole roam and spot up Mosley from outside, and he answers one more time. Three threes in the ball game for Mosley. West Pike now on top, 14 to eight. Biggest lead of the day when you have to worry about Hall inside. That's going to open the perimeter a little bit, and Mosley has really taken advantage. Jason Graff on the attack. Gets it to Schlick. Hubbard spins it to the wing, and the shot by DJ is good. He has a couple of buckets, and it's now 14-10. Hubbard's starting to find his range, too. 
Here's Stotts, and he's fouled. That's two on Kevin Jones. Two U High starters with two fouls. But the Pioneers are deep as Jason Napsiger has checked to the scorer's table. He will most likely replace Jones. I think he was ready to anyway. Well, Mosley just been terrific shooting the basketball from long range. A good look there at the penetration of Mosley. Set up the play. Stock working very hard in the inside position. A nice delivery by Mosley on the play. And Stocks is going to go to the line. Not a real good free throw shooter. Only 50% on the year. There's a good look at Jason Stotts, who does shoot it better from the field than from the line as he missed that one. If he's at 50%, you'd probably assume he'd make this one, right, Dick? He's got to play the percentages here and get this one down, yeah. And if he does, his team will be up by five. Travis Lundberg has checked into the game for West Pike as Stotts comes up empty, and the lead is still four. He fall back in the game for the Cardinals. Score pass by Slip and yeah, a good steal by Kirk Mosley to lay up Hall. He got it, caught it. Foul has been called. The lead is six now for the Cardinals. For a great lead pass by Mosley. Led, led Hall just perfectly, and Hall was able to catch the ball and a great finish. Watch the steal on the play right here. Look at Mosley up in the air. Great steal. Here's the impressive part: the lead pass, and Hall just runs under it and lays it right in for a nice basket. A nice finish by Hall. Now he's at the line, looking to complete the three-point play. Great pass though by Kirk Mosley. Hall against Slip, his first team's fifth, and the pass was good because. Hall was the only one who was going to get to that ball. He lobbed it up over the defense and took him right to the basket. Yeah, it showed Hall's quickness on the play, too. Great play that time, especially the pass. Love the pass by Mosley. As Hall completes the three-point play, and the lead is as big as it's been all day. 17-10, West Pike on top. And now another pass knocked out of bounds by the Cardinals. Well, West Pike's very aggressive out of their defense. Very solid tough man-to-man -man defense they will make some adjustments they will play uh, will play some zone also and, and probably yeah it looks like they're going to go zone with this lineup in the ball game it's a one two two and they like to trap out of it you i think has recognized the change in defense they're looking for the shot here as nathan hubbard is fouled count that one he's hauled on his arm as nathan hubbard puts it down tough shot wasn't it tough shot a baseline leaner it was a good delivery to him and it, Hubbard up, leaned into the defensive man. Take a look as he leans right into the defensive man right there. Hubbard puts the ball on the floor with one dribble, able to spring up in that little lean right into the defensive man. A nice bucket that time by Nathan Hubbard. And he tries to complete the three-point play and does. And that brings Uhigh back to within four at 17-13. Just under a minute to play here in period number one. Jeremy Stanton returning for the Pioneers. Nathan Hubbard sits down. And in for the Cardinals, Joe Wilson for the first time. So Steve Joslin going fairly deep to his bench here early in this game. And we know u is going to lose their bench because the strength of their ball club has been their depth all year long. And that's a good thing to have on this final day of the season because you're going to play two games. You hope that the second game is for a state championship. Cardinals here will wait for what they hope will be the final shot of the first period. Top-ranked Aurora Christian against Rock Island Alleman in our second semifinal game. Jim Albrecht will join Greg for the call of that one here on the IHSA Television Network. Skip pass by Hall out to Hall. Mosley, tough shot, couldn't get it over the rim, and Uhi will rebound it. Might have. Oh, yep. That's uh, Kurt Olson who had just checked into the game, number 13 there, who saw a teammate flying to the bucket. And he would have had time to get to the basket and lay it in, but Kurt stepped on the sideline. Well, West Pike put the shot up maybe a little bit quick, but they definitely had an opportunity and a good look at it right there as he steps on the sideline. Good call, and now Mosley has it knocked out of bounds. It's off of Olsen, and we still have 1.3 seconds left here in the first quarter, so a shot possibility for the Cardinals. Here's Hall firing, and he got it off the yes. glass, and it's a 20-13 to 13 lead for the Cardinals. He heaved that thing up there. Oh, threes have been the story. Five for West Pike and three for U High here in the first quarter. What a finish to the first period. And the Pioneers now have 
to regroup. That can stun a team a little bit. They've got to put that one behind them and get on with period number two. And we'll do just that here in a moment. We return after these local messages. Ladies, has your husband retired from his job while you're still doing the cooking and cleaning? If so, call today for information about the Westminster Village Retirement Plan. Now, Discover Con, Stars on Ice. Coming to Peoria Civic Center, March 19th. Starring Olympic champions Christy Yamaguchi, Scott Hamilton, Katarina Vitt, Gordy Ava, and Grinkoff. Olympic silver medalist Paul Wiley. Four-time world champion Kurt Browning. And an international honor roll of skating champions. Tickets now at the Civic Center box office. All Ticketmaster locations are charged by phone. Discover Card, Stars on Ice. Presented by WEEK-TV and Light Rock 107 WSWT. What would make you buy a bottle of this? Put beer in it. Weeknights following News 25 at 6. Browns has big savings on the area's largest selection of fitness equipment, including treadmills, home gyms, and more. Save up to 50% of Browns sports on University next to Walmart. Three-point showdown part of the show here next weekend when the double-A teams invade the assembly hall. And that'll be fun. Keith Hall could be an entrant. He can make the three as the ball is inbounded here and stolen by Uhai. Meanwhile, we watched the replay of that three by Heath Hall, which ended the first period, the fourth three of the game for West Pike. The Pioneers have a couple of them. They now have the ball because of the early turnover against West Pike. Kurt Olson up top. E.J. Hubbard driving the baseline against Craig. He gets the basket. He has three of them already. And the plan is back to the one five. E.J. Hubbard having a nice ball game, too. Off to a good start. Cardinal for the ball against that one two two zone, which they'll see all game long. The tip by Olsen. He runs it down. Good Olsen a layup. Too hard off the glass. But the rebound and the shot by Ness. Oh, Ness Digger stayed with it nicely. He played well off the bench yesterday. Had six points for his ball club off the bench yesterday. And Uhai scored the first couple of buckets here in the second period. They're within three. Peter Craig bumped by Kurt Olsen, who's called for the foul. His first. Olsen, another sophomore. Three sophomores in the starting lineup, and then Olsen comes off the bench and plays quite a bit. Jason Ness, a great football player at UI, making a nice play inside with the, with the miss and then the second effort. Twenty to seventeen, West Pike. Mosley for three again. Deep of them for him in this game. Kurt Mosley with a dozen points, and the lead is six. Ahead of the defense is Natsiger, and he was patient there, waiting for one defender to fly by him before he laid it up and cut the lead to four. Did a good job running the floor. Nice ball fake, got him a nice basket inside. Now the pace more to West Pike's liking, but the Pioneers are scoring some points at this pace as the ball is knocked out here by Kurt Olsen. Cal Hubbard looking on. His team made it to the finals three years ago. If he can get a victory here this morning, he'll have another trip to the championship game. That pass nearly tipped by Olsen. Hole from three. And the rebound for Jeremy Stanton back in the game for the Pioneers. Olsen with the baseline drive, and he's fouled. Olsen, a very aggressive player, both offensively and defensively. A good drive on the play. Nice ball fake there. He's able to freeze the defender there. Marty Hull, the big guy, just drove around him on the baseline. Hull with the reach, picked up the first foul. That's his first, and the team's fourth. It'll be put in play by the Pioneers. Here's Stanton. Kurt Olsen from long range. That's a three. You like three-point shooting, you're in the right spot. 23-22, the lead down to one as you have slapped that ball away. It still belongs to West Pike. Well, just outstanding shooting by both of these ball clubs. Both teams really shoot the basketball well. When you look at you high on the year, they're at 47%. And West Pike, uh, they shoot better than 50% on the year. And from three, as you pointed out earlier, the Cardinals are at 38%. 
Keith Hall for a triple. My goodness. That's his second. Where's the D on those threes, huh? Somebody's got to come out and guard the three. They're worried about Hall inside. So Hall from outside, and now Uhai has tossed it away as that last three-pointer for Steve Joslin's team has given the Cardinals a four-point edge. Three gets you back in there quick. The West Pike's biggest lead was at uh, at seven at 20 to 13. Six three-pointers for West Pike, four for the Pioneers. We've had 10 threes in this game, and we're not yet midway through the second period. About five minutes to go in the period with West Pike holding a four-point lead and the ball. As Keith Hall steps on the baseline that time as he tried to make his drive to the goal. Now we see Jonah Patumzi coming back, and Matt McClintock enters the game for the first time for the Pioneers, number 45. Olsen there sits down. He'll be joined by G uh, DJ Hubbard. Full court pressure by the Cardinals once again. Jeremy Stanton gets it across the timeline in time. Inside with Tubbsy and the reverse layup falls over the rim. One of the two sophomore guards connected there. Nice look that time by Stanton. Give the assist to Stanton. And a steal Great here steal. by Nathan. Here's Jonah Batumzi with the layup. And Uhai with four quick points has tied the score. Batumzi's second basket. And now another turnover against the Cardinals. And so the frantic pace of the game working against Steve Joslin's guys. And they may be fortunate right here to be getting a television timeout. We're dead even about halfway through the second quarter. One of your network sponsors is All Sports. Grandpa Shaq, tell us how basketball used to be. <laughs> well, the basket wasn't always 20 feet tall. What about 100-yard courts? Not even close. What happened? All sport. All sport. Unsurpassed taste. A third more carbs than Gatorade for energy. This is a body quencher. After all sport, the game was a breeze. Until they put in the moving basket. All sport. The game will never be the same. One thing about farming. You never really do it alone. Earth and sky. Season and change. Canopy and no-till. No other herbicide brings you both burn down and season-long control. So you start clean and stay clean. Yesterday and tomorrow. Canopy, the no-till herbicide. Coming up at the half, we have our new computer game, The Ultimate March Madness, a semifinal game between two former champions in boys' class A basketball. A lot of fun. This is how it's paired up to this point, and we'll talk about that as many of our previews at the half of this game. Back to center court and Dick Lucky. As the Pioneers, who've tied the score, now look for their first lead of this game. But comes the double team. The cross-court pass from Nathan Hubbard. But comes into the goal, and that puts you high on top for the first time today. For oh, a great drive that time. Saw a little seam in the D and took it strong to the glass. What a steal right here. Stanton with the steal. Going to take it in himself. Nice bucket that time as Stanton, the press, pays off. And Mosley may have hurt an ankle on the play. Pioneers have now scored four baskets in a row, three of them off turnovers by Steve Joslin's team. He didn't look too happy there. Well, uh, Uhai's on a roll. That's an 8-0 run now for Uhai. Uhai's grabbed the lead, a four-point advantage at 30 to 26. 348 left here in the second quarter. Nice run by Uhai. Good look at their veteran coach, Cal Hubbard. Pioneers now shooting 65% from the field as they have changed the seven-point deficit into a four-point advantage. Mosley apparently is okay. Let's watch the here. You see how he, just, he rolled that right ankle. Yeah. Oh, he rolled the ankle right there, and Stanton was able to pick up the loose ball, and, and a nice finish by Stanton. Here comes that ball press again, that 1-2-2 two, two ball press. They look to trap on the sidelines out of it. Brock Billings back in the game, has it up top to Hall. Inside, and a foul is Matt's or excuse me, Brock Billings received the pass and he'll go to the free throw line. That's 
a good pass there to get him to the line. Nassiger, number 55 for you. I commit the foul. Billings, one of those type of players. I think he always be around the basketball. He always on the glass, likes to rebound. And that time in a good inside position. He's at the line to shoot two. The first of which is good. Rock Billings, Jr., who scored six points and had seven assists yesterday. You know, they scored 34 baskets yesterday, West Pike did. 23 of them received assists. They passed the ball very well in that win over Stewart's and Strasburg. And one of two free throws there cuts the U high lead to three. Good pass from Hubbard to Nassa. Girl missed the layup. Yeah, nice play, though. Good two-man basketball right there. And the Cardinals now can tie it with a three. And Jonah Batumzi will be called for his third foul. Aggressive defense by the sophomore, but it costs him. You have foul 33, Jonah Batumzi. And that is number seven. Actually, number eight against the Pioneers. So we're in the bonus now. West Mike will shoot the one and one. Batumzi is playing very well. With Batumzi and Stanton are in the ballgame, I really think that ball press is much more effective because they're quick to the injury. Oh, yeah. I mean, those guys are quick. They're only sophomores, especially the Tums. Uhai has the advantage in that department. As mostly, as you see, a pretty accurate free throw shooter fires a one and one. And that's his first point from inside the three point line today. He has 13 now for the game, and his team is down only two. As Kevin Jones checks back in for Uhai, replacing Napsiger, who played well off the bench. Jason Uhai's really done a good job on Hull on the inside. Hull got the first basket for uh, West Pike and, uh, and, and hasn't scored since. Mosley gets one of two free throws, but gets the offensive rebound. Hull kept it alive on that offensive glass. Nice tip out that time by Hull. Peter Craig back in the game. Running pass. And Billings misses the shot. Kevin Jones with a nice rebound. He showed some strength there, and he's fouled. It's only the fifth against West Pike, so no free throws coming for the Pioneers. Billings with a personal foul. Went after the basketball strong on the glass, and uh, just hacked Kevin Jones off the play. Billings picked up the first foul. He's the first part to pick up his second. As Heath Hall now sits down for the Cardinals. Jason Stotts checks in. We saw a little bit of him earlier. This is D.J. Hubbard in the backcourt for Uhai. Pioneers lead it 30 to 28. Earlier here in the second period, they were down by seven. Scored eight points in a row. Three of them off of steals. Three of the four baskets off of steals. Six of the points. Here's D.J. Hubbard. And he is having a nice offensive ball game. D.J. with nine points here in the first half. His team back up by four. That's a tough shot right there. And the near steal by Hubbard. As they say, he came down before he was able to save that thing in. But D.J. Hubbard having a nice ball game. Four of six from the floor and a free throw for nine points. There's a couple of assists as well. Down to a little bit more than two minutes to go in the half. The bomb by Craig and the rebound for Kevin Jones. Four holes nowhere to be found on that offensive glass. You have really keeping him off the glass. Stanton for three and the rebound Brock Billings. This is Mosley. Triple teamed, he fires anyway, and Kevin Jones has another rebound. Now Jeremy Stanton with Billings back. He takes it to the bucket and gets it. That's a sophomore making that move. Numbers weren't really there. Stanton was just able to spring up over the defender and knock down a big shot. Uhai now with a six-point lead at 34-28. Biggest Uhai advantage as Steve Joslin. Figures out what to do here about a six-point deficit with 1.43 to play in the second period. The Pioneers, Greg, now shooting 63% from the field, 15 for 24, and that's hard to beat. Well, they're getting a lot of good looks. They're also getting some easy baskets. Their defense has created some offense. They've got some offensive of steals. A good look there at Steve uh, Joslin, the coach of West Pike, and I'm sure he's telling his ball club that, that we need to get Martin Cole involved. Let's uh, eavesdrop a little bit.
Cal Hubbard's team breaking huddle there. West Pike was talking more about offense and Cal Hubbard applauding the play of his defense. I mean, that UHI really lives by uh, how well their defense goes. And that coach Roslin feels maybe the Cardinals have now become a little too reliant on the three-point shot because of their early success from that range. Well, that's where they've had their success. They're 54, 54 percent, six of 11 from three-point uh, range. But, uh, you know, you got to get the big guy. You got to get Hull involved. He needs a touch every time down the floor on the offensive end. Uhai showing a little half-court trap here. Craig dribbles through it, but then loses the ball. This is Jeremy Stanton. And the rebound for Graff, and the whistle and a foul. He'll go to the free throw line. Jason Graff back in the ball game. Following Stanton in case he missed it. Sure enough, he did. Well, Uhai much more aggressive. A little surprised that the West Pike's not going to glass a little bit harder. On this play right here, watch a great steal by Stanton, but he doesn't finish the play. And you'll see the West Pike players, they're all trailing, they're all trailing and watching instead of getting in and follow up. They just assumed that Stanton was going to make the layup. West Pike not a good job of following and trying to get uh, the rebound after the missed shot. Graff just made the free throw, and now his second one is also through there. Jason Graff, who averages just three points a game, has his first two of this game, and it's now an eight-point pioneer lead at 36 to 28. Peter Craig with a little jump pass inside, and the foul called against the Pioneers. They're trying to get at that time to stops. And now we'll put West Pike at the line. They are in the bonus. You might call up 15, Jason Graff. That's his first. Graff's first foul. And to the strike goes West Pike. Jason Stotts, a senior for the Cardinals of West Pike. Missed it badly, and Stanton has the rebound. Oh, the numbers are there. Three Great shots. And the layup, or not a layup, but a baseline jumper missed by Graff. And West Pike fortunate to get out of that without giving up the score, and now it'll be Mosley's turn to go to the free throw line. It was a well-executed break, though. The numbers were there for you. High. Good job by Stanton delivering the basketball. And the draft just missed that short jumper on that baseline, but they had the numbers of three-on-one break. Watch that. You'll see right there, good delivery right there. Elected to go to Jesus' teammate Graff, and the shot just didn't go. Mosley comes up there for the loose ball, and he's fouled on the play by Graff. Second foul on Graff. Free throws for Mosley. His team down eight. And another miss. They've had trouble from the line as Nathan Hubbard rebounds it. Only six of 13 from the line. They're usually a fairly decent free throw shooting team. They're shooting a 71% clip on the year. Pioneers with less than a minute to go in the half now may save 4-1. They lead by eight. Jason Graff fires in the corner to D.J. Hubbard. And a foul against Billings. That's number seven against the Cardinals. And so the Pioneers go into the bonus. You had an excellent job there. Just spread the floor, taking time off the clock. Good floor balance. They had an open, opening on the inside. A nice easy layup. A chip shot they were going to take. But they were going to spread the floor. And they were going to be content to take the last shot of, uh, of the quarter. As the free throw is in and out, not good for DJ, but he gets the rebound as it was tipped off by his cousin Nathan. And a layup good for Hubbard to build the U High lead to 10. Nathan Hubbard scores his sixth or his uh, fifth and sixth points. Keith Hall spins it up top. Pioneer zone really taking Marty Hall out of the ball game. He's had only three field goal attempts so far. Ball for three. And that's what they're going to need if they can't get it to Hall. He Hall now has 13 points to lead down to seven. And a bomb at the buzzer is not good by Jeremy Stanton. And period number two comes to a close. An important three, perhaps, there at the end by Heath Hall of West Pike as Cal Hubbard walks to the locker room with a seven-point lead here in his team's Class A semifinal game against the Cardinals. Boy, the points coming from the perimeter for West Pike, 13 for Hall, 13 for Mosley, only two for Marty Hall. So Cal Hubbard's zone defense has done the job as far as protecting the middle. Let's see if we can find out more from Coach Hubbard as Joe Passion visits with him. Coach, you come walking off the court, shaking your head a little bit in disgust. You've got a seven-point lead, and you've held uh, Marty Hall here to just three field goals and two points. 
Well, we uh, didn't do a very good job uh, of attacking the basket, made some bad decisions. We should have a bigger lead, but still got to play the second half no matter what the lead is. Is there anything that you feel that you can continue to do to stop Paul as you've done here in the first half? All we're going to do is work real hard. He's a very good player, and uh, we've got our hands full, and we'll just do the best we can at trying to keep him from getting the basketball, and hopefully we can keep them from banking any more threes in. All right, Cal, go get him. Thanks, Thanks very fun. much. Cal Hubbard and his normal U-high team with a seven-point lead here at the break. Uh, Semi-final game number one of the Boys Class A Basketball Finals here at Assembly Hall, and we'll be back with more of our halftime festivities from Champaign after this word from one of our network sponsors the dairy farm families of Wisconsin and Illinois. Mm, you are looking hot tonight. And you, oh, I mean steamy. Love your eyes. Nothing compliments your dinner like a nice tall glass of ice cold milk. Hello, sweet thing. Ice cold milk. Help yourself. You know, living out here is uneventful. Yeah, nice and quiet. Uh -oh. I mean, something happens every now and then. Fortunately, you and country companies keep things from becoming catastrophes. Country companies. It's nice to know when it matters most, the country's behind you. You're even helping us plan for our future. If we make it that far. <laughs> what makes you so tough? What makes the New Holland Superboom so tough? Everything. See your New Holland dealer today and put the toughest skid steer loader on the market to work for you. New Ford 70 Series. Genesis. Designed for comfort. Dedicated to productivity. With a fuel-efficient engine. Incredible lugging power. The Sidewinder console. Super. Also with 13 points. Just a buzzer beater right here, an inbounds play to Hall. Nice kiss off the glass. Hall with the three-pointer once again for West Pike. Real good board work here. Nav Ziger really keeps it alive right there. And a great rebound and a nice putback on the play. Stanton, a nice pass inside to his running mate, a sophomore. Jonah Batumzi and a good finish that time by Batumzi. A good look at that play. And let's now join Joe Passion, who has been joined by Steve Joslin of the right, Cardinals. Guys, Steve, obviously you want to get Marty Hall back in the offense. How do you do it? Well, we're going to try and run him along the baseline a little bit more. Probably put him out top. Try, told him we get, if we get the ball, he's got to go one-on-one -on -one a little bit. But... Uh, uh, the one 2 2 has been stifling. They've done a great job on it. All right, Steve, go get him the second half. Steve Jocelyn chasing a seven-point deficit. We'll be back with that second half after these local messages. Browns has big... Starting on March 20th, Days of Our Lives moves to 1 o'clock on WEEK TV 25. Just been put in play by the Cardinals. Our second half is underway. Normal U High with the seven point lead. Brock Billings with it inside will feed it back out for a three from Mosley. And he's been hot from three in this ball game, but not there. See, Hull didn't even get a touch on that possession right there. West Pike with the basketball back and moved Hull back on the outside. And the call there will be a block as Hull did get the touch and took advantage of it. He took it down the baseline. DJ Hubbard called for the foul. Talking about pressure defense in the second quarter, U High was outstanding defensively, Dick. They scored 10 points off of turnovers in the second quarter. 
as Westlake puts it in place, still down by seven. Ball for a three. I don't think they're going to get it done living from outside that arc. I think you have to credit the defense, though, of you high. West Pike would love to take it inside, and Hull's very active. His zone has just been very effective in the one 2 2 They're putting a lot of a lot of pressure on the, on the inside. That foul on Nathan Hubbard. There's a look at the statistics. Look at that shooting figure for you high. 59% from the field, and 7 for 12 from 3 for West Pike. That's the big reason they're as close as they are right now, down by just 7. Our halftime stats brought to you by DuPont Canopy, the no-till herbicide. Here's Hall inside, and there's his second field goal of the game. And that is nice to see from West Pike's perspective as they're back to within five. Nathan Hubbard into Kevin Jones, and contact but no call. The ball comes loose, and Stanton rescues it. But Tumsey from 14 feet. Oh, nice touch, good rotation on the basketball. His fourth basket, and Uhi back up by seven. Brock Billings in traffic, tough shot, it's way off. And D.J. Hubbard rebounded it and then slapped it off of Hall's leg. It belongs to the Pioneers, although Steve Joslin questions that. West Pike. Using full court pressure in this game, trying to speed up the pace of the game. The Pioneers haven't had a lot of trouble with it. This is Kevin Jones, his pass to DJ Hubbard, who has a shot fake and a layup, which he misses, but he will get to the free throw line. Right, an excellent job keeping the floor spread. They run that motion offense, and they use those cutters very, very effectively. And Uhai really knows how to, and understands how to set their man up and come off those kicks. Very well coached basketball team. There's the head guy, Cal Hubbard, right there at Uhai. And it's his nephew, D.J. Hubbard, who is on the line. Now, D.J.'s father is Selby Hubbard. He played on a Sweet 16 team, as the free throw here is good. Back in 1971, that was the year before we went to two classes. So Uhai, a small school, making it to the round of 16. Among the players on that team, Jim Cruz, who currently coaches at the University of Evansville, as D.J. Hubbard gets both free throws. Uhai's lead is nine, and that's one shy of the biggest it's been all game long. They may be able to pressure. stamp and tips it away, and he is not going to get the chance for the pass there. Now he picks, or Hubbard picks it up and misses, and here's Hall. 42-33 in favor of the Pioneers. Craig with a bomb. It does not get to the rim, and it's out of bounds off of West Pike. For a game very, very physical on the inside. Officials really letting them play inside. DJ Hubbard has trouble finding somebody and gets it to Patumzi. This is DJ Hubbard. What a game he is having. He now has 13 points. He averages nine. He only scored six yesterday. And it's an 11 point lead for the Pioneers, largest of the day. As the foul here is whistled against Jeremy Stanton, his first team second here in the half. Uhai just continues to shoot the basketball at just such a high percentage. They're now 18 to 30 from the floor for 60%, 60% also from three point land. But they've attempted only five three-pointers. Most of their shots are coming from around the basket, and that's why they're shooting a tremendous percentage as Hall has a tough roll there, and Kevin Jones has the rebound. And Patumzi out in front of the defense, spins and gets fouled. Keith Hall forced to make the foul to prevent the layup. Patumzi, I don't believe, will get to the line here. Cal Hubbard asking for the intentional foul call. I don't think he'll get it. Uhai does such a good job moving the ball up the floor quickly. A great release by Batumzi and a great pass also by Stanton. Batumzi may have got away with one there. It looks like he may have pushed off before he made that spin move and then Hall picked up the personal foul. But Uhai enjoying an 11-point advantage at 44-33. Brock Billings there, number 31, headed to the bench. Stotts back in the game for the Cardinals. Nathan Hubbard with about an eight-footer. And the Uhai lead has been built to 13 points. Cardinals have lost only once this year, and that a one-point game to Aurora Christian back at a tournament. 
Aurora Christian, of course, playing the second of our semifinal games here in a little bit against Rock Island Alderman, and some people have been anticipating a rematch between those two. But the Cardinals are going to have to do some coming back if that is to happen. Well, you guys are so tough. Their defense has just been stifled. Nathan Hubbard with a knock away that time, and Batumsi, the layout. Great pass, great look. And a good play by Batumsi to change his shot. Because of the defender, he still got it through there. u high's lead built to 15 points. And West Pike needs to stop the bleeding for at least a little while. 4.55 left in the third, 48 to 33 in favor of u high. One of your network sponsors is Ford. Your Ford dealers earned the right to be called the Truck Authority. And he doesn't take it lightly. After all, Ford F-Series has more repeat buyers than any truck in its class. Airbag and analog brakes, standard. And enough pulling power to blow the competition right off the road. No wonder it's America's number one truck, 18 years straight. Now save $1,600 on a well-equipped F-Series pickup. Plus get factory air conditioning at no extra charge. When you're the truck authority, it carries a lot of weight. See your local Ford dealer now. Another day begins in Europe. And as it does, American Airlines will touch down in 11 European cities, in nine different countries. So whether it's business or pleasure that brings you to Europe, fly the airline that can have you there as early as tomorrow morning. American Airlines, something special to Europe. These are some highlights from yesterday in the quarterfinals. And, of course, Rock Island Allman moving on, advancing to the semifinals. We'll see them against Aurora Christian, who advanced with their big victory yesterday over Rockford Lutheran. So it's Aurora Christian coming up next against Allman in the next semifinal game. Right now, U-High with the lead over West Pike. Back to Dick Lutchie. And it's Peter Craig here, Joe, taking the ball to the basket and getting himself to the free throw line. His team with a 15-point deficit still in a lot of time, of course, but uh, West Pike's going to have to change some things here, Greg. Yeah, I still think they need to get the ball inside. Paul's just get, not getting enough touch. There's only five shots in the ball game. He needs 20 shots per ball game. Dick. Here's a guy that averages 27 points per ball game. Had 35 yesterday, 13 rebounds, and uh, with only four points in today's contest. Peter Craig gets one of two free throws. Kevin Jones rebounds the second one. It's a 48-34 lead for the Pioneers, who try to build it here and do with Nathan Hubbard. They're just on fire, shooting the basketball. Remarkable, 62%. Another steal by Hubbard. Great lead pass, and Stanton, the sophomore, a good finish with the left hand. That's his first basket of the second half, and Uhai up 18 points. They were down at one point by seven. Back early in this game, this is Marty Hall. A good great, move by Hall. great move to the bucket by Marty Hall, and the lead saved with 16 points. Halfway through the third period, Pioneer is very much in control. It tripped up a bit, but Tumsey is red hot in this ball game. He has a dozen points. And it's back to an 18-point gap. That's Billings forcing the issue. Hubbard has the rebound for Uhai. Nathan Hubbard spins away from Marty Hall. And Hall leaning on him, a little frustrated, I'm sure. He's picked up the foul. Well, West Pike trying to get it back too quick. You know, that last shot by Billy couldn't really offer anything to the offense. He give up. He tried to take it one-on-one. -on -one. When you're playing catch-up basketball, you got to realize that you have to, have to chip away at it and chip away and hope you've got a chance at the end to make some kind of a run. They're trailing by 18 points. They're 340 left in the third quarter. 54 for you high and 36 for West Pike. I think it's safe to say the Cardinals have not been in this position yet this year. The only game they lost was a one-point game. And right now they find themselves down by 18 as Jason Nafziger just into the game, spins out of a double team, creates his own shot, and a rebound for Billings. Kurt Mosley to Hall, who fires from two-point range. That's his fourth basket. Three of those have come here in the third period. The lead cut down to 16. When he can get his hands on the basketball, he can score. He just hadn't had many opportunities to touch the ball. The defense has just been so tough by U High. The 1 2 2 zone defense. Ball back to the game, replacing stocks. The Pioneers will go to their bench. 
Jason Graff back in, and there is Kurt Olsen, number 13, checking to the scorer's table. Jonah made a good point earlier, too, Dick. We talked about the depth of high. Very, very important when you have to play two basketball games in the same day, that depth. You gotta win the first one before you get to play in the championship game, but perhaps Cal Hubbard even thinking about that a little bit right now, as his team here is throwing it away. 3.18 left in the third. But really, no matter what the score is, they use their bench. They utilize the 10 or 11 players anyway. So, I mean, that's a, uh, that's a plus for normal u -Hot. He falls shy of the timeline. Now, uh, Mosley gets it across. Skip pass to Mosley, and he did a good job to handle that one. Oh, defense has really got West High spread out. Marty Hall can't hit it from the perimeter, and Peter Craig had it knocked out of bounds by Kurt Olsen. Boy, the Pioneers are feisty right now. They can kind of uh, smell it. <laughs> They're going after it. They're going for the jugular here. And when you've got a lead and you're playing well, it's much easier to shoot the basketball, too. It's tough right now for West Pike. They're playing catch up, and it's that much more difficult to shoot the basketball with a little more pressure. As the shot from the shot perimeter is no good for Heath Paul. Massacre gets the rebound. Jason Graff is fouled by Peter Craig. West Pike has really gotten away from their game here in the third quarter. Really gotten away from it. You guys just taken completely out of anything on the offensive end for that, uh, for that tough defense. And you know Steve Johnson at that time at the halftime trying to figure out a way to get Hull involved and to attack that 1-2-2 zone, and they still haven't mastered it yet, have they? Here's Nathan Hubbard, 14-footer off the dribble. Marty Hull has the rebound. Mosley is fouled by Kurt Olsen, who does not agree with the call. That is uh, number two on Olsen as we look at it again. Mosley quick with the basketball right there. Looking, I think, yeah, I think he wanted to give the basketball up. Olsen reaches in right there and catches Mosley across the wrist and personal foul uh, on Olsen. West Pike to put it in play. Mosley has trouble fielding that pass. Peter Craig takes it hard to the goal and he has drawn the foul. So the Cardinals remaining aggressive here on the offensive end. You guys starting to ring up that foul board a little bit too, right there. A foul that time on uh, high. It was Matt McClintock who picked up the, uh, the personal foul. And the West Pikes need to convert at this line in that block stop. Peter Craig, a 74% free thrower. That's not a towel of surrender. <laughs> As the second free throw is missed. By Peter Craig, the lead now is 15. Still lots of time for Steve Joslin and the Cardinals. Jason Graff in the ball again gets it to McClintock. Good pressure defense here by West Pike, and they lose it. Well, so Uhai does. The Cardinals force the mistake. Good press that time by West Pike. West Pike, when they go to their press, they'll move Marty Hull, the big guy up front, so it makes it very, very difficult for you guys' guard to pass over the top. What they've got to do is be able to go ahead and dribble and look for the middle of the floor to move it up. Mosley to Hall. Mosley for three, and he gets another one. That's his fifth three-pointer of the game, his first in the second half, and the lead suddenly is a dozen. And the foul called here against Keith Hall. And the Cardinals starting to get into a little bit of individual foul trouble. That's the third on the senior hall. Pike making a little run. They trailed by 18. Now they've cut this lead back to 12. Like to get under double digits at the end of the quarter. But a nice three that time. Another three ball by Kirk Mosley. And Mosley with a hot hand. Five of seven from three-point range. And on the day with 16 points. He is the leading scorer in this ballgame. You have a great balance. D.J. Hubbard with 13, Jonah Batumzi with 12, Nathan Hubbard with 11, Jeremy Stanton with 9. Here's Stanton, and he lost it, but gets it back. Well, and now we're going to we're gonna get a held ball to be Uhai's turn. Good hustle on the play that time. West Pike, I think, gotten that second win, so to speak. That was their first three of the second half, and they've uh, gotten a new life after that three by Mosul. A good hustle on the defensive end. Hall banging around for the basketball. Billings down on the floor after it also. McClintock to put it in play for Uhai. He finds Nassiger. 
And that's basket number three of the game for Jason Hamster off the bench. He had three hoops yesterday. Nice set play. Easy, easy picking right there for Nasdaq. 14-point lead again for the Pioneers. And the defensive foul called against Kurt Olsen. He has a little trouble swallowing that one. I think he felt like maybe the offensive player got that elbow up after him right there. Let's see if the elbow comes up by the offensive player. See that right elbow came across. Olsen got a nice shot. Got him right on the kisser. And uh, Kurt Cracker absorbing that blow absorbs his third foul. Puts the Cardinals on the free throw line. Heath Hall misses. They've not done the job from the line. The Cardinals have not. They're 8 for 18 from the stripe, and they could be in better shape in this game. They're down 14 as the Pioneers now have the ball. And another foul here called against the Cardinals. Peter Craig's going to get the personal foul, reaching for the basketball. His third. Billings, Hall, and Craig each with three. For Steve Johnson's team, his third. The sixth on the team, so no free throws here. He might be in the bonus next time. No shot. Full court pressure for the Cardinals has been a little bit effective here lately. Kurt Olsen trapped the three-quarter court. But Stanton finds Graff. Uhai has a three on two as Graff fires and gets it. Jason Graff's first basket. Pioneer lead back to 16. Good body control. Nice bucket that time by Graff. The whistle blew there as Billings delivered that pass to Craig in the left corner. We have a foul against Pioneer. McClintock. Whistled for the infraction. His second. Foul, 35. His second. Free throws for Marty Hall. For 53. Marty who has not committed to a school. I would like to be uh, after this tournament. Several schools in touch with him. He really impressed some people here yesterday. There you see the difference in free throws. Cardinals actually have more, but they had to shoot it way more often to get the extra free throws as Hall gets that one down. Those are the parents of Marty Hall. A little anxious right now with their son's team down by 15. That's Hall's 10th point of the game right there. The lead is 14. He's got such a good touch. This is Jeremy Stanton. Wide open is Graham. Good ball, but Stanton makes such good decisions on the floor. Dick, he's an excellent point guard and only a sophomore. Good decision. 16-point lead for you, High. We're down to the final three quarters of a minute here in the third period. Billings from about 27. And the rebound for Kurt Olsen, and he is fouled with 37 seconds to play in the third. That will put the Pioneers at the line. And that's number four on Heath Hall. That is the seventh team foul for us tight. The Cardinals are over the limit. That's a bonus to the high. just has a lot of talent. they got some players coming off the bench who played very well in this one. Their depth's good, and uh, they're very, very, uh, very well coached, but they're a very intelligent basketball team. Very intelligent. They do what they're supposed to do in their system so well, and that's because, as Olsen makes the free throw here, that's all they play, uh, basically. I mean, uh, that 1-2-2 two, two ball press defense is what they play all year long. And Cal Hubbard uh, says he's a little bit like Vince Lombardi. He lets the opponent know what he's going to do. There's no secret about that. Here's yeah. what we're going to do. You try and stop it. And this is high school basketball. I think they keep it simple enough that uh, it's very easy to understand offensively and defense. I think a lot of times coaches make the mistake of uh, complicating things on the offensive and defensive end for high school players. And I think Cal Hubbard, in watching his ball clubs play here uh, three out of the last uh, four years in the state tournament, uh, I think they keep it very simple and very enjoyable for the players. Cal will tell you he keeps it simple so the coach doesn't and get confused. Well, he helps us too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The announcers also don't get confused, which can happen very easily. Olsen committed that last foul after making the two free throws, and now at the other end, a toss through there for Brock Billings. Uhai's lead right now is 17 points. We have a half minute to play here in the third period. That was Olsen's fourth foul, so he went to the bench. And a good look there at Brock Billings of the Cardinals of West Pike. What a year they've had. As 
Billings gets both free throws to cut the gap to 16. Back into the game, Joe Wilson. We saw him very briefly in the first half as Heath Hall sits down with four fouls. Pioneers against the pressure. They'll set it up here for the final shot of the period. They were up seven at the half. They are up 16 right now with a chance to make it more. Nathan Hubbard misses the three, and the ball flies out of bounds, and there's still four seconds to go, so the Cardinals have a chance here. Now a bucket here for them would be real big, especially if it were a three. It may have to be. This is Mosley. He fumbled it, but I think got it away in time. They're going to count it. So, at the end of the first and at the end of the third period, the Cardinals get somewhat out of control, three-point shots to go through for them, and that cuts the gap to 13, Brad. Yeah, Mosley was having problems finding the handle right there. He seemed to drop it, and then he hits the leaner. Plenty of time left on, left on the clock right there. And as Mosley lets go of the basketball, we need to check that shot clock in the corner, Dick. I'm not sure he got no. the shot off in time to count it. The official rule that was a good basket, but it is the buzzer. It's not the clock. It's the bu it's the buzzer. And it's point. the sound of the horn, not just when that clock hits zero. The basket will count, and it was knocked down by Kirk Mosley. Well, maybe some life for the Cardinals after all. They're still down 13 with eight minutes to play, and we'll return after these local messages. Once inside the new accent, you will admire the intelligent sense of design. You'll appreciate the advanced dual airbag system. You'll applaud the roomy interior. And you'll adore the affordable price. The all-new accent from Hyundai. Finally, high technology you can really get into. Now, introductory priced at $8,484. Only at your Hyundai dealer. At Central Illinois Eye Clinic, we use the most advanced surgical techniques available. And as medical advances occur, we strive to stay current with this technology. Dr. Crockett is the only corneal transplant specialist in the Bloomington Normal area. Dr. Emerson and I perform no-stitch cataract surgery, radial keratotomy, and the latest laser surgical treatments. Central Illinois Eye Clinic. For appointments or emergencies, call us. Personalized, responsive eye care is what we're all about. Slam dunk competition here at the Double A Tournament next weekend. Friday and Saturday, we'll do this again here on the IHSA Television Network as the shot here to start the fourth period is not good by Marty Hall. He missed about a 14-footer. And the Pioneers have the ball now, plus a 13-point lead. Looks like Hull may have been hit on the wrist there, too. He may have to shoot the basketball. Great pass to the Batum. But what a block by Billings and a loose ball. And it's scooped up by D.J. Hubbard. UI is just going to spread the floor and going to take nothing but layups here. They're going to try and run some offense and spread the floor and run clock. But Tumsey back in there now with three fouls. In fact, UI has it starting five on the floor. Backdoor pass, but Tumsey missed the layup. The defense foul. flew at him as Jones got the rebound. He missed it. And now the foul is called against Kevin Jones. Marty Hull with the rebound. I agree with you, Greg. I think they missed it the first time, but justice prevails. Jones missed the shot. Now he's going for the foul. That's four on Kevin Jones, a good-looking sophomore for the Pioneers. Now, backdoor cut there, a good delivery by Stanton. The thumbs, he didn't get it to go, and Jones looked like he got the rebound, just couldn't finish it. And you see it right there as Jones fouls Marty Hull on the play, and it's going to be Hull at the line. And West Pike's got to convert these free throws. That clock stop. Hull in a one and one opportunity. 77% free thrower. What a game he had yesterday here as he puts that one down to cut the lead to a dozen points. Hugh Joslin's team climbing back in. They were down 18. All yesterday with 35 points, 15 for 24 from the field, and 13 rebounds. As now he has a dozen points in this game, and his team is within 11. As close as the Cardinals have been here since early in the third period, there is a blocking foul called against Heath Hall, and that is number five against him. Seven twelve to play. A good look at it right here. And as you can see, Hall was moving on the play. And, you know, that backs up the call by the official on that play. And Hall's going to have to leave with uh, five personal fouls. And 
good ball game for Hall. Fouls out with 13 points. All 13 of those points that came in the first half. And he made three threes, so nine of the 13 from outside the arc. Well, that replay did show the official got it right, but Hall almost got there. As Stocks is back in the ball game for West Pike. So Heath Hall will have to sit and watch now and see if his teammates can rescue this one. Jonah Batumzi shooting his first free throw of this game. And he now has 13. Batumzi, who is an excellent soccer player at U High. 77% free thrower. One for two this time as Stops gets the rebound. Hall for three. And that's off to the side, and it turns out of bounds off the rim. It belongs to the Pioneers. That was a little deep for that shot right there. A little deep and just a little bit quick. There's still time for West Pike to get in the ball game. I think that one was just a, a little bit out of Hull's range. Well, Hull coming into this game, seven for 24 from three. So he hasn't shot very many of them, and I think Steve Joslin would rather have somebody else taking that shot. Nathan Hubbard to DJ Hubbard across the timeline. Just under seven minutes to play. Pioneers by a dozen. As the reach-in foul is called, against the Cardinals. And Peter Craig, that's four on him. West Pike really ringing up that foul board now. They've already lost Chief Hall, and that's four personal fouls on uh, Peter Craig. A good look at uh, Steve Jocelyn. DJ Hubbard has struggled this year from the line, but he will not shoot his free throws here until after another break 648 left to play in the ball game university high school looking to get to the championship game here in champaign for the second time in four years they lead by a dozen one of your network sponsors is dupont some call it god's country a place where things come together like nowhere else on earth friends and neighbors conservation and production Side brings you both burn down and season long control. You start clean and stay clean. You and the land. Canopy, the no till herbicide. Good song. Great song. weekend and uh, boy we look forward to that as well eight teams the best eight in the state will compete for the double-a state championship you'll watch it all here on the ihsa television network chicago farragut and kevin garnett among those who could be here boy there's some great players this year in the state of illinois greg uh, garrett's one of the tops in the country not only in the state of illinois Dick. as the throw here is good by dj hubbard he has his 14 point and it's a 13-point lead for his team. Still a 13-point lead. The Cardinals have six and three-quarter minutes in which to try to make up that deficit. Hall, a tough shot off the dribble. Tough shot. Right. Oh, able to win. And the lead down to 11. We need a big steal right here. Weaving his way through traffic is Stanton. But Tumsey winds up for the ball. Takes it around Hall. Oh. Great pass, and Kevin Jones is called. Jonah Batumsey saw that he had the quickness advantage there in that matchup with Hall, so he worked his way right around him and made a nifty pass. Uh, watch a no-look pass right there as he gives up the basketball to Jones. Jones coming in strong to the glass, and the only thing Scott could do was foul Jones, and Kevin Jones is sophomore at the line. And the left-hander puts it down. Kevin Jones has made all six of his free throws in this tournament. And uh, he's only a 48 percenter during the season. Apparently he likes 
the atmosphere here in Champaign. He is six for six from the line. His team again leads by 13. Well, the three sophomores have been outstanding, haven't they? As the, pre, uh, the shot here is missed, but the follow by Billings. His first basket, and we're back to an 11-point difference as West Pike hangs in there. Second game between Aurora Christian and Rock Island Alleman to follow. And then tonight, third place in championship games here on the IHSA TV network. And the three sophomores, Stanton, but comes in also Jones have just been awful, awful good. Mosley picks up the personal foul on a reach. His third. Ball at 41, Kirk Mosley, his third. 5.46 to play in the ball game. It's free throw time again for the Pioneers. So you have done an okay job from the line. Better than okay, really. 11 out of 14, that's 79%. Jeremy Stanton, usually a reliable free thrower has his first point from the line in this game, his 10th point of the game as Cal Hubbard watches. Cal Hubbard's been around the block a few times before he coached here at Uhi, spent some time at Lincoln, at Moline, Rock Falls, and a year at Westmont. So this would be his fifth stop as Stanton is called for the block. Lead now back up to 13 after those two free throws by Stanton. Uh, Cal Hubbard fell that Mosley was kind of leaning with that arm and, and Stanton got the personal foul. You know, Dix, we featured Stanton in our open, had a good ball game yesterday. Boy, he's so solid at that point guard position. We're only a sophomore. Good basketball teams must have a good point guard. Had 14 yesterday in their win. Chris Mosley missed the free throw. He's going to get the rebound. It's Hall who missed the shot. He had a chance for a three-point play. He'll go to the line after D.J. Hubbard got it. Oh, a good job going for that loose ball. A good grab right there. Good strong move to the glass. And he was fouled on the play by D.J. Hubbard. West Pike now 14 for 25 from the line. 56%. They're usually a 71% shooting team as Paul gets the friendly roll. He's 5 for 5 from the line. And 13 of his 15 points have come here in the second half. This is that one. Rebound to Nathan Hubbard. Pioneers by 12, which is the lead they enjoyed at the quarter break. And now the Pioneers might be able to use that quickness to take the air out of the ball here for a little while. This is Stanton. Just over five minutes to go, and you high by 12. It's tough to pressure that basketball out of some type of zone defense. They've got to go out and make a foul. I think they need to make some kind of adjustment to go to man-to-man, Dick, and get out of that uh, zone looking to trap. Even in the man, uh, the Pioneers with the quickness advantage might be able to be pretty effective at that spread game, Greg. Well, they're, they're so smart with the basketball. Their guards make such good decisions. And, they're able to penetrate all, all five players you know, you handle basketball very, very well. Marty Hull commits the foul there. Nathan Hubbard at the line. The senior for the Pioneers, despite that miss, has scored 11 points in this game. Now we're going to give him another opportunity. That was a lane violation, so Nathan takes advantage. And now he can build the lead to 14 points. Well, he's got that style at the free throw line where he pauses right at the top. And that's what happens. People lean into that lane. He's got that pause right before he releases the basketball. They call a balk if he were a pitcher. <laughs> he gets them both, and it's a 14-point lead. Three for Mosley, just off the back iron. He was close for that one. Billings with a rebound. Craig lost it. And Batumzi with a great over-the-shoulder pass, which leads Stanton to a layup. Great play. Sitting on the floor, tossed it over his shoulder. He saw Stanton out of the corner of his eye, and Jeremy makes it 72-56 U high. This is Craig with a wild shot. And the rebound for Nathan Hubbard. And the Pioneers in control as Batumzi oh. back to Jones, and the layup, no, but a foul is called. Well, good job rewarding Kevin Jones. The talented 
left-hander, only a sophomore. Great pass there by Stanton to Batumzi. Another no-look pass from Kevin Jones still in that lane. Strong to the glass. Mosley with the, the reach on the play. Jones is the line to shoot two. There's a look at Kevin Jones, whose brother Ryan played at U High a few years ago and was part of the uh, quarterfinal round team of two years ago. He gets them both. It's 74-56. U High is back to its biggest lead of 18 points, and we're down to four minutes to go. A block by Jones. And D.J. Hubbard to Batumzi to Nathan, who scores the goal that builds the lead to 20 points with now less than four minutes to play. Nathan a little shaken up on the play. A well, good ball movement at that time, a well-executed break. I think Hubbard went down real hard. I think it was on his, uh, I think maybe it was on his uh, left yeah, arm. Awesome. Ryan here fans hoping he gets up because they've got another game to play. See, a great block by Jones. He kept it in play right there. D.J. Hubbard with the basketball, head up, looking up the floor. Spots Batumzi and right there, a quick delivery right there to Hubbard. And we'll take a look as he falls and, and hits the deck hard on the play. But a nice basket that time by uh, Nathan Hubbard. And Nathan now getting into a sitting position. And they're looking at the left leg. I think it's his left leg and possibly yeah. his left yeah. knee went yeah. down real hard. I first thought maybe he'd gotten his uh, left arm and a good look at his, uh, his mom, which is... Uh, And Nathan Hubbard does get to the floor and hobbles off. Okay. Cal's, Cal Hubbard's wife and Nathan's mother is the woman there with her hand up against her nose. She looked a little concerned. Well, obviously mom's going to be very concerned. I'm sure dad's seen him hit the deck pretty hard before, but dad was out there pretty quick to check him out also. Looks like he's okay. Moms are like that. Well, mom should be like that. That's right. That's why we have moms. Mosley across the timeline. A 20-point pioneer lead now, and it looks like a tough spot here for the Cardinals. They really will have to stage a miraculous comeback to rescue this one, as they can't get it down. Finally, they do. Marty Hall scores his sixth field goal, but it's still an 18-point lead for U High, and we're down to three and a half to play. Jeremy Stanton with it. Cardinals still playing that zone. They're looking to trap out of but you know, the problem is they just don't have the quickness. You were right. U High's a very, uh, very, very quick basketball team. I really felt like that maybe West Pike could match up uh, quickness wise, but uh, that sure hadn't been the case. U High's been a much quicker basketball team here this afternoon. They have to be one of the quicker Class A teams in the state. And they get to the free throw line again here in the person of Jeremy Stanton. I think it's a mark of a good coach, too, because U High in the past has been much more disciplined, much more controlled on the offensive end, and uh, really not. Uh, looking for uh, to break the basketball and score off the transition. But that's just a different, this team's just different. They play up-tempo basketball. As both free throws are through there, they can play at any speed. Although I think coming into this game, they didn't want a total up and down the court ball game. Hall makes a three. That was about a 23 footer. Marty Hall doing what he can here. But it's going to be too late for his guys, it appears, as Jason Graff in the ball game makes the free throw and a late whistle as the foul occurred just after he released the ball. They might give him one and one. Although I think maybe they will call the foul on the shot. Well, Wilson's going to get the personal foul. The foul was on uh, Joe Wilson, but boy, you hide just moving the ball up the floor very quickly. But Tumsey with a great release pass there. And Jones, a nice look there. Uh, there on the on the inside and Graf gets the basket and you have an opportunity to go to the line to complete the three-point play and you can see the U High players very, very happy and all indications are they're gonna be advancing to this championship game. To so play either Rock Island Alderman or Aurora Christian. The Eagles, the number one ranked team in the state, the pioneers of Rock Island Alderman will try and pull off the upset in our second semifinal game, which of course you'll see right here. There's another foul. And we're down to 2.55 to play, and we'll start emptying the benches here before too much longer as Joe Wilson picks up his second. Foul 22, Joe Wilson, that's his second. DJ Hubbard at the line. Let's see what Joe has found out about that injury to Nathan Hubbard. Joe, go ahead. 
Well, when we were talking to Nathan a moment ago about the injury, it's really just an abrasion and a bruise. He just said he banged the knee on the floor. It's okay. Father made sure that he had the uh, ice put on there, and he should be ready for the championship game. He did also admit, though, this has been a very, very physical game, but he feels a little bit relieved sitting on the bench now, relaxing with a big lead. Now, the one advantage the team that plays the first game, the team that wins the first game, has is a couple of extra hours of rest, and sometimes that can be meaningful as we see Nathan Hubbard there icing that knee. Yeah, give that an opportunity to see uh, Norman U. High play on uh, more than one occasion uh, this year. Are you surprised the way they've been able to put points on the board in the tournament? They're a team that averages only 61 points. That's right. And here in this ballgame, they've scored 80 points. A little surprised? Well, not really, because they can play, as we said before, at, uh, at just about any pace. They have scored as many as 92 this year in a game. So they probably won't top that in this one, but you, you figured they'd score more just because of the Cardinals' uh, desire to push the ball up and down the floor. Well, maybe I should say, did you think they could hold the Cardinals to 60? Yeah. Now that, now that's <laughs> underneath their average. Then. That, that's a different question, and I have to admit that uh, I didn't think that. They really, well, their defense is so strong, and it just... Their zone is the perfect defense, I think, for the Cardinals as Mosley gets yet another three. He has seven threes in this game, and that ties the record for the uh, highest number of threes here by an individual at the state tournament. JoJo Johnson of Benton and Chris Payne of Elgin St. Edward are the others who have made seven threes in a game. If Mosley can get one more, he'll have that record all to himself. He's hit some big ones in this ball game. He's had an opportunity to put up 11 threes in the game, and he's knocked down seven of them. The team record for threes has now been broken. Ten was the previous record here in the Class A tournament for three-pointers in one ball game, and West Pike, in what probably will be a losing effort, makes 11 of them, as they're still down by 16 here. Kurt Olsen will go to the free throw line next for Uhai. We're down to 221 to play. Uh, it's been a rather long, laborious finish to this game, and I think the last 221 will take a while as well. Yeah, it was just tough for West Pike. They dug themselves a big hole. They got off to a good start and actually uh, held an eight-point lead early in the ball game. And you know, from that point on, especially the second quarter, I really felt like that's when the game turned around. And that's when you know, ball press went to work, and uh, in that quarter, you know, scored 10 points off the turnovers, and that's really been the difference. West Pike's never been able to adjust that good, tough pressure defense. McClintock finds Napsiger and he's fouled on the shot along the right baseline. Jason Napsiger again in the right spot and he goes to the line after another foul on Joe Wilson. Of course when you're shooting the basketball like you has been able to shoot the basketball in today's game everything looks pretty well. I mean they've shot 63% field goals 50% from three-point range and 70% uh, from the line. And now a little more than 70% as Napsiger makes that one. That's his seventh point. Jason Napsiger, very good football player at U-High, spins the next one through there as well. 18-point lead for the Pioneers, 2.16 to play. Rock Island Alderman and Aurora Christian waiting in the wings as Joe Wilson misses the three, and the ball tapped out of bounds. Alderman, 18 and 12, but that's a little deceptive, Greg. They play in the Western Big Six, perhaps one of the best double-A leagues in the state. They have to play against the likes of Quincy, a team that could be down here next weekend, and Rock Island, another team that could be in the Elite Eight in double-A. As Napsiger gets the basket, and we'll go to the free throw line. Jason Napsiger padding that scoring total in this one. He's up to 10. 6'1 and 190 pounds. He gets in there and really battles. He loves to work on that offensive board. You'll see right there. Grass strong. The glass doesn't go. But look at Navziger just working inside. He just he just outworked West Pike for that basketball. Nice stick back that time for the big guy. And uh, miss on the free throw line. Keeps the gap at 20 points, but now a steal. And the basket. It's Jason Graff who gets that one. And now the biggest lead of the game is 22 points for the Pioneers, who will advance for the second second time in four years to the championship game. Here's Napsiger. And a great block from behind. That was Joe Wilson, I believe. Here's Mosley looking for that 8-3, and he didn't get it. Marty Hull is called for a walk. Well, the Pioneers headed to the championship game, and West Pike will play in our third place game.
Into the game, Darren York, number 21, and uh, he handles the ball up top and is fouled by Marty Hall. And so York, the 11th player for Uhi to enter this ball game, and he is a guy that they've used very consistently this year. I think he's played in 25 of their 30 or so ball games. A very good three-point shooter, and he's been kind of a three-point specialist for them this year. Has not seen a lot of action so far in the state tournament. But Cal Hubbard will use him at touch time, especially when he needs a three as he goes to the free throw line now. Meanwhile, Marty Hall heads to the sidelines, and uh, he heads there with the realization that his team will be playing for third place this evening instead of playing in the game that he so wanted to play in. Oh, had a big second half, so he really responded and got back on track offensively for his ball club in the second half. York misses the free throw, and the rebound for West Pike, and it's a 22-point lead for U-High with less than 90 seconds to play. Mosley going for that record, and he's missed twice now. But the rebound for the Cardinals, although it's thrown away. Kurt Olsen finds Eric Cliff in the ball game. He missed the layup. Napsiger there to finish up. Remember Phil Regan? They called him the vulture because uh, he picked up so many saves and uh, late in the ball game. That's kind of Jason Napsiger. He's there to scoop up every opportunity. He's, he's right there all the time. He can pick up any kind of loose ball. He's kind of a garbage player, but uh, really works hard. Likes to work on that offensive glass. That's his opportunity to score a point or two. He has more than a point or two in this one. A dozen now. And Nassiger there heads for the bench. And gets a great hand from the U-High faithful. So it's hard to see without any one player on a team like normal U-High. It's a team concept. They have great team unity. Mosley again trying for that 8-3. Maybe he knows he needs one more to get the record as he missed it again. Matt McClintock with the rebound. He's just checked into the game, as has Nitai Spiro. And U-High has totally emptied his bench. There's York with the three. We mentioned that he can make the long-range shot. 91-64, Pioneers with less than a minute to play. And the shot from outside by Mosley, and there's the record. He has his eighth three-pointer of this ball game. And we're down to 25 seconds to play. U-High up 91 to 67. Pioneers have scored 92 previously, so they could top that here as Spiro misses the three. And the rebound for Andy Matthews, who's in there, and his shot off the side of the iron, not good. And now less than 10 seconds to play. Joe Wilson had it go in and out. And the shot at the end of the game is not good. And the final count, U-High 91, West Pike 67. And the Pioneers advance to the championship game as Cal Hubbard and Steve Joslin exchange handshakes and some words. It's the third place game for West Pike and the title contest once again for normal U-High. dominant in this game, and that certainly surprises a few people here in Champaign. Not that they would win, Greg, but that they would win this decisively. When they're doing it with young players. Three young players, three sophomores in the lineup. They have senior leadership out of the two Hubbards, but I really like the way the sophomores have played. They've really had tremendous ball games. Stanton, Batumzi, and also uh, Kevin Jones. But when you look at U the U-High Pioneers, they're strictly a, a team basketball team. Not real, not really a, a star on the floor at any time. They really move the basketball well. They all get into the act on the offensive end. The team concept is there for U-High. This win is very, very impressive. Their 91 to 67 win over West High. I've got five players in double figures for the Pioneers. They certainly showed their balance in this victory. Let's go to Joe Passion now, who is with a couple of Pioneers. Well, certainly not Pioneers in getting downstate. Cal Hubbard has done that before. Congratulations, you're back in the championship game for the second time in the last five years, three years. You had said before the game, don't expect an 80-point game. Uh, why did it break down that way? I said, don't expect them to score 87. Okay. Uh, we thought that we had to stop them with our defense, and we did a pretty good job for most of the game. And then we got our offense rolling a little bit in the second and third quarters, and uh, we did a nice job on the offensive end. But basically, it was a defensive game. Jonah played a great game, too. The transition game was all on top of what I'm sure you like to see. Well, Jonah's really been improving on the la over the last three weeks, and he's really starting to play up to his potential. What's making this team become more confident with each game, Jonah? It seems like you guys just seem so much fluidity around the court each time you guys are passing the ball back and forth. Uh, our defense has just been playing really good, and that's helped us get out on the break, which, we're, which we score a lot of our points, and 
But that's been the biggest thing has been our defense. Very physical game here, but you guys were still able to turn it up to the tempo you wanted. How important was that to be able to get out to the lead you got? Uh, I don't know. It just, <laughs> it just helped us out. I mean, we knew we could beat them, and then once we got the lead, we just helped us gain confidence, and then we took it from there. Coach, uh, before the year, did you expect this team to be able to gel together with its youth to be able to get this far? I never thought that. I never think that way. I, I think in terms of where are we when the season starts and uh, how good can we become. And you never know how a team's going to come together. But this team is gelled not only on the floor but off the floor. You can see great friendships starting to form, and uh, it's just it's just a it's a really neat feeling. Well, congratulations. Now we're with big uh, game here for Jonah again. I think we have some highlights we're going to show here on the player of the game. And you seem to be making a lot of moves, a lot of great shots, and a lot of passing. That's what I was really impressed about in this game. Why don't you describe this play here on your part? Uh, another good example. This is where you guys really pushed the ball up the floor, and it seemed like it touched everybody's hands. I'm sure that made Coach Hubbard feel very good. How fulfilling is it to have as good a good pass as well as a basket? Uh, I don't know. I mean, you're still getting points either way, so it doesn't matter if you're scoring or if you're passing as long as you get the points. You obviously do the both very well. Congratulations, guys. See you in the championship game. Right, thanks. Thank you. Uh, Jonah, our player of the game, Cal Hubbard, the big coach, coming back to the championship game once again as U High advances to the boys' A class A championship game. We will be back with more previewing the upcoming semifinal game number two, and we'll be back with that with Alleman and Aurora Christian after these messages from one of our network sponsors, Country Companies Insurance. Really miss.